What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. So I was on Fragrantica and I saw that they're doing their 2024 awards ceremony, I suppose, but this is community based. So I thought I would check it out, bring you guys along with me. So, you know, this is the first time I'm seeing this and this will be up on Fragrantica. If you want to go check it out, I would encourage you to take a look at what uh, what is uh, transpiring. But this is the best fragrances for, of 2024. So they've got a bunch of different categories here best women's fragrance, best men's fragrance. We'll check that out in a minute. I don't think Altair is the best. Um, best unisex fragrance, uh, the best niche fragrance, and you know, uh, men's favorite on women, and then, you know, some other ones. So we'll take a look at a couple and um, we'll talk about like the top ones. I think we should start with the best men's fragrance. So the best men's fragrance of 2024, Everyone is saying Altair. It's got most of the upvotes. It's got a lot of downvotes though too. Uh, Lamal, I, uh, Lamal Elixir, I think that one won in the past. Uh, I think that one was last year's winner, um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Edial Loam Parfum. I have not smelled that one. I'm really uh, wanting to try it now, especially because it's on the top three. I think that's pretty uh, pretty cool there. I, I know that the Loam Edial line is a almond-based uh, fragrance line. So I, I had the Eau de Parfum and the Cologne version for a while. I, w I wore the cologne version to the gym a lot. I used to wake up pretty early and I used to put that on, which, you know, good times. But um, Oud Malachite too. You know, this one uh, gets a lot of love online. I have not smelled it yet. I need to try it um, because I hear some fantastic good things about it. I'm pretty sure I have a clone of it in my collection, um, but I'm not 100% sure, so I won't touch on that too much. But yeah, I need to try it. Um, I think that what I'm gonna do after this video is up, I'm gonna order uh, some samples of some of these ones and give them a smell and give them a sniff and see if they're any good. Pacific Chill, um, that is not one that I would doubt for a minute it should be the top five. So Pacific Chill is one of the best citrus fragrances that you can buy, money can buy. It is pretty expensive. It is a tremendously expensive fragrance that I would not suggest you blind buy because it's like, I, I'm thinking it's $500 retail. I could be wrong on that, but it's ridiculous. There's a bunch of clones out there on the market that are uh, really good and they're like not $500. That's beyond ridiculous. After you know what goes into a fragrance, uh, it's like 12 bucks total what they're, with everything, the packaging, the bottle, the, the cap, there's no reason it should be $500. Valentina Woma Born in Roma Intense. I would agree with that one. That one is a fantastic fragrance. Um, really good lavender, kind of vanillic kind of tone in there. Um, got, it's got a lot of cleanness. I really like it. It's, it's kind of sweet, uh, but it's a very playful scent. Very nice, excellent stuff. And then Boss Bottled Hugo Boss, uh, the absolute version. You know, that stuff took me by surprise big time. I didn't like it at first. I really thought it was kind of a bit challenging with the frankincense and this leather suede kind of mix in there. Uh, but after wearing it, I absolutely love it. The dry down is where it is at. It's like this ambroxan, nice smoky resinous kind of thing with this frankincense. The leather really comes out really nicely. Excellent, excellent fragrance. Uh, right next to it is Aqua de Jo Parfum. I have not tried the new one, the original, or the original is one of my favorites, the Perfumo. I have three bottles, I went through like three bottles of that. Really good stuff. I love the, um, you know, the incense quality and the Perfumo, but I don't know if this is a rebranding at all, so I'm not even gonna touch on it. Um, but I, it's one of the fragrances I really want to pick up and try. Um, and I could probably find that one at Macy's. But let me know if you guys have any experience with uh, the new Aqua Di Gio Parfum. I would love to know if it's any different from the, the Perfumo that came out well, not too long ago. But uh, Hugo Boss right above me, Hugo Boss Elixir. Um, I'm not sure. I, I haven't smelled that one yet. Um, I, I, I didn't even know that one was... I thought Boss Bottled the Absolute was, I'm gonna have to try it. Uh, I've not smelled it, so uh, I couldn't comment on that. Um, it's it's cool to see myself up here too. I mean, uh, no pun intended there, but uh, you know, why I sell myself, the Eau de Parfum is one of the best floral fragrances in my opinion. I really think that it is a, uh, you know, an excellent, excellent fragrance. Um, it's got white florals. It's got a little bit of patchouli and broxin in the base. Really, really nice. And then I have not tried this one yet. The Gucci Guilty, the uh, Elixir. This one, um, 
I, I think I tried it once and I wasn't really a big fan of it. Um, but you know, time will tell. Uh, this up here on the other right is Latafa's uh, Kawa. And that one's a good fragrance, kind of sweet. Uh, Creed Absolute, that came in. Uh, we're kind of far down the list right now, but um, you know, I, I just like to see what, what got voted up. So you have the, um, the Armani Code Par Eau de Parfum. Wow, I didn't know they came out with a, another one. I'm gonna have to give that one a try soon. A lot of these on here I have not tried, which is a, it's an embarrassment, actually. I'm embarrassed for myself. Like the new ombre leather is up here. Um, you know, haven't tried that one. I hear good things about it. Invictus Elixir, uh, Victory, don't like it at all. Very sweet, sickingly sweet. Klein, uh, a little obnoxious. This one, when it first came out, the scent, the boss, uh, the scent Elixir, when this one first came out, got a lot of love online. Uh, huge amounts of hype. And um, I haven't yet to try it. I really wanna try it. And I think that this is, that's gonna be the uh, the message of the video here is, Nate has not tried a lot of these fragrances. Same thing with Blue Talisman. I wanna try it so bad. I think I'm gonna be ordering a sample. But yeah, a ton of fragrances on here that are really low that I love that I think like Eros Energy should have been way up there. And same with Oud Mineral here. I think these two should have been way up on the list, way higher than they are now. Uh, intense Tobacco or Red Tobacco is right where it needs to be. Uh, this far down the list. I think that this is a, a weird release. Who needs an intense version of Red Tobacco? Not me. Uh, this is an interesting one too, Dark Leather. This one came out and it was kind of a weird, um, you know, release from the company Victor and Rolf. But, you know, we got to make some flankers for that extra money. That's what these companies say. Uh, the uh, Profondo Parfum, really good. I love this stuff so much. I got a little bottle, bo a little baby bottle of it, uh, 1.7 ounce, I think, and I've been wearing it a lot. Love it in the in the summertime. I was wearing a whole lot of it. Um, it was a really good, excellent fragrance that just smelled. It smells super fresh, and it's got this green nuance in there, and a bit of a peppery nuance too. I really find it's absolutely divine. Definitely a step up from the original Profondo. Um, definitely a step up in the right direction. Um, Latafa Caprice, that's a good one. That's a really good one. That's a uh, blue electric kind of inspired by Wulong Cha, the X version. That's a really good one, but it's kind of muddled down with some woods and I don't, I like the original much better. Black Lacquer, this is a interesting one too. This one apparently smells like ink and really interested by that one, but man, these companies, like they, they asked a pretty penny for these fragrances. Uh, there's Latafa's uh, Mason Alhambra, you know, their Jean Loe. I don't buy these fragrances anymore because they're counterfeit. When you copy the bottle, it's counterfeit and, and, and it gets flagged on YouTube and YouTube sends you a big slap on the wrist and threatens to take down your channel or whatever platform you're on. Parfums de Barley Perseus. This one came out and everyone didn't, was not on it, you know? Um, you know, this one has a lot of downloads. Actually, we're getting into the area where there's a lot of downvotes on these. I don't know why Perseus is here because it has 100 downvotes and 70 upvotes. That seems to make sense. But right now, the best men's fragrance of 2024 is Altair and Jean-Paul Gaultier Lamau Le Parfum, or not Le Parfum, the Elixir version. And I would uh, totally not agree with that. Uh, I don't think that that's the case. I mean, Altair is great, and so is Jean-Paul Gaultier. They're very vanilla heavy. Um, if you like vanilla, I would say yes, that's great. Um, if this is a 2024 list, None of these came out in 2024. That means that IDL um, Parfum is the winner here for the 2024. They should disqualify the other two. All right, we won't touch too much on women's fragrances because I am currently staying away from women uh, because trying to heal my sensitive heart. So we're gonna keep them over there. The best unisex fragrance, it looks like Altair and these vanilla fragrances are really high up there. You have Angel Share and then Pacific Chill just pops up in there. Um, yeah, it looks like vanilla fragrances. Um, Kawa made the list, so. I wanna take a look at this one. This is women's favorite fragrances on men. So let's take a look at this category here. All right, so the disclaimer up here says, this was a women's fragrance, so please note that only women can vote here. All right. I think that this is incredibly biased because I don't know any women that like Dior Homme Intense on men. Um, I mean, I could be wrong, but I've had very bad experience with ladies 
and Dior Homme Intense. Bleu de Chanel, yes, but all of their exes wear it. So that's probably why they like it. Terre d'Hermes, I don't think that this list is right. Unless ladies like, no, I, I firmly believe that this is a lie. I think they, the company paid the, for Grand Tech. Jazz Club, uh, number four, I think that this is real. Jazz Club is a really good, excellent fragrance. And I think it does pull in because it has that sweet kind of vanilla, kind of mysterious vibe to it. Kind of the tobacco-y kind of thing. I think that this one could do. Same thing with Stronger With You Intensely. I think that Stronger With You Intensely is definitely a women loving fragrance. I mean, I'm speaking out of my ass here because I'm not a um, goddess. But yeah, I, I don't think that this is correct. Uh, Creed Aventus, that should have probably been higher, but it's there. And Fahrenheit, what is this, the 80s? Eros, uh, Reserve Privé, Allure Arm Sport. So the moral of the story here is like, if women can only vote from the, you know, the uh, notice here, you don't need a whole lot, uh, you know, craziness to really get the attention of, you know, the opposite sex. Dior Homme Intense, excellent fragrance. I don't think every woman's gonna like it. I think it's a bit challenging for some ladies to like. Blue de Chanel, easy choice. Terre d'Hermes, don't listen to Fragrantica. If anything, Stronger With You Intensely is good. All right, the best men's fragrance of all time. I like this category. Let's take a look at this category. Now, I think that this one was voted on by men because it's Dior Homme Intense and then Dior Homme Parfum right next to each other. At number three, you have Terre d'Hermes, the uh, original, which, um, yeah, I would agree with that. That's a classic. I don't think it's more popular than Creed Aventus at all. But yeah, I think it's up there. This is the real controversy. Blue de Chanel not only beat out Sauvage, but it also beat out Creed Aventus and Lana Wee DeLome. So Lana Wee DeLome is pretty low on this list, the third row down. This is the sixth row down and you have Terre d'Hermes Parfum next to Dior Sauvage Elixir. I don't think that this list is accurate. Like I'm not speaking from a bias point of view either. Like. I mean, you can vote however you want, but realistically, come on. Angel Share is like the 10th row down. And this is even more weird. Lamal Elixir was the best release of 2024, but it's like the 12th row down next to Dior Homme Cologne. Yeah, you know, I don't take this seriously at all. So that being said, we're gonna back out of here. And then you have the best iris scents. 2020. What? Click on this. So Reserve Privé, yeah, that's a great uh, iris smell. Uh, Le Mal, Le Parfum, I would say it has iris in it, but it's not all that much. Uh, definitely not beating out Valentino Womo Intense, and then above me right here, Dior Home 2020. That does not have iris in it. Doesn't have iris in it. And I'm just scrolling down to find Dior Homme Intense, and I'm still scrolling, and it's not even on here. So you have Dior Homme the original, and then you have Dior Homme 2020 right here, but nowhere on this list is Dior Homme Intense or Dior Homme Parfum. And like, and I'm not even touching on most of these. Like, I don't know, man. I think I'm just gonna make my own video about the best because whatever. Anyway, go check it out for Grantica.com. You know, for Grantica gets a lot of rap, uh, a bad rap, I should say. I like them. Sometimes they can be a little weird. I mean, these lists don't make any sense whatsoever. The neighbors are vacuuming apparently, so they're going to cut my video short. So thank you so much for watching everyone. Let me know if you voted at all and why did you vote for Altair to be the best? It is good, but it's not the best by any means. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for my video about the best releases in 2024 that actually came out in 2024. Take care everybody. We'll see you next time.